for all the Malazan faithful who have waited patiently for me to return to that world. I think you're going to be happy. Sorta. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another TBR video, this time for the month of August of 2023, guys. Headed towards the end of summer, headed towards the fall. And these months are just kind of just flying on by now. I can't believe we're so far into 2023 already. And we are now looking at the eighth month, my birthday month, though. It's a month that I'm very excited about because, guys, I will be on vacation when it begins. I will be on an island in the middle of the Caribbean, supping down some pina coladas and uh, watching some beautiful crystal blue water and reading some of these fine things that I am going to talk about today. So here are the things I plan to read this month. There is gonna be some rollover from last month because I didn't quite finish everything. And obviously, because I'm still kind of working on July at the moment, I'll be doing that stuff. Like I said, the uh, the ship does leave on the 29th. So I really, some of that I'll still be finishing in July. We'll leak over into August, but these are going to be the new things. Now, obviously, the beginning of August, guys, I want to finish Of War and Ruin and Dragon Haven, neither of which I have began yet. So uh, this is probably going to be my big cruise read. This is probably the one that I'm going to be reading the most there, and it's, uh, it's big enough, as you can see, that it'll probably last the whole trip, but it's like all this time uninterrupted from the kids, you know, because they're going to be staying home. Mom and I are going to be going and having a nice old parents vacation and there's going to be nothing to do but read for a lot of it. I'm very excited about it. So I'll be able to start to work on those and uh, hopefully uh, a lot of these things I've had kind of laying around for a while are going to get picked up. We're going to talk about that as we begin. Now, usually I do this in the order that I plan to read it in, guys, but look, it's going to be all over the place. I don't know what I'm going to feel in the mood for on the cruise and a lot of that stuff is going to be like, hey, how do I feel today? That's what I'm going to start reading on. So I might start four books while I'm on the trip and finish none of them. That's always possible. That's what vacation does dictate. But let's go ahead and talk about each thing in the plans for August. First, guys, I'm going to be continuing with the Andrew Z. Thomas Luther Kite series by Blake Crouch with Locked Doors and Break You. This is books two. And I want to say three because I, I don't, it's sort of a trilogy, but the thing is, it's like a uh, Locked Door, or I'm sorry, Break You. Apparently, it's only like 100 pages. So it's kind of more of like an epilogue. I think the two books together are about the length of Desert Places was. So really, it's just going to be the, the conclusion of that series. But I do plan to do that one because I will need me a resolution to that story because Desert Place was really, really good. I kind of need to see what Luther Kite, what Andrew Z. Thomas are up to now. But guys, you want to know what is Locked Doors and Break You About? Well, seven years ago, suspense novelist Andrew Thomas's life was shattered when he was framed for a series of murders. The killer's victims were unearthed on Andrew's lakefront property. And since he was wanted by the FBI, Andrew had no choice but to flee and to create a new identity. Andrew does just that in a cabin tucked away in the remote wilderness near Haynes Junction, Yukon. His only link to society is by email, through which he learns that all the people he ever loved are being stalked and murdered, culminating in the spooky and secluded outer banks of North Carolina. The paths of Andrew Thomas, a psychotic named Luther Kite, and a young female detective will collide. And guys, I'm very, very excited about this because, as you might know by now, Blake Crouch doesn't really miss with me, so I'm expecting another fun thrill ride adventure with Andrew Z. Thomas and Luther Kai. Should be a ton of fun. It's about as fun as something that deals with serial killers can be, but you know, Blake does find a way to keep us entertained. And in the end, guys, do we not want to just be entertained, I think, right? Uh, next up, guys, I'll be continuing The World of the Expanse. James S.A. Corey, uh, Ty Frank, and Daniel Abraham's pseudonym. I'm very excited about this, guys, because Nemesis Games is what I'm reading as I record this, and it's excellent. It is so good. And I've heard a lot of people say that Babylon's Ashes is probably the most divisive book in the series. Some people love it. Some people don't. I think there's a bit of a time jump, maybe. Or I think there's a time jump after this. I'm not exactly sure. But I am curious to see how we can go from so, so high in Emphasis Games to maybe so low in Babylon's Ashes. We shall see. I think every series, you know, that's nine, ten books long, you usually will have one book that becomes like the whipping boy. And this seems to be the one that has gotten that label. So, uh... I'm excited to get into it and kind of see if I do agree with that or not. Because I think there's been some things about the expansion from the fandom that I've kind of disagreed with. So I don't think I'm going to be in lockstep all the way. But let's talk about what is Babylon's Ashes about. Now, the Free Navy, a violent group of belters in black market military ships, 
has crippled the Earth and began a campaign of piracy and violence among the outer planets. The colony ships heading for a thousand new worlds on the far side of the alien ring gates are easy prey, and no single navy remains strong enough to protect them. James Holden and his crew know the strengths and weaknesses of the new force better than anyone. Outnumbered and outgunned, the embattled remnants of the old political powers call on the Rosinante for desperate mission to reach a Medina station at the heart of the gate network. But the new alliances are as flawed as the old, and the struggle for power has only just begun. As the chaos grows and alien mystery deepens, pirate fleets, mutiny, and betrayal may be the least of Rosinante's problems. And in the uncounted spaces past the ring gates, the choices of a few damaged and desperate people may determine the fate of more than just humanity. Guys, I'll also be doing uh, The Vital Abyss. That is the short story I think that takes place before this. And I'm going to continue to do those the rest of the way. They've been mostly good. I've had a lot of people ask me, can you skip them? Yeah, I think you can skip them if you really do want to. Uh, the thing with that is, and I, I, I meant to show you guys this. Uh, the thing with that is, is uh, I think that with the short stories and the novellas, is they really do flesh out a lot of things in the world that isn't just because the story does really always focus on Holden and the Rosinante crew and some others around them, something that they're in a conflict with. And it'll do a little bit of things of, you know, this is happening on the other side of the solar system. But I think those really do give a nice filling out of some of the history and the world and things around our characters, our heroes on the Rosinante. So I think that they're very much worth it. But again, no, it's not going to change the story for you if you don't read those. Just the nine books, I think you'll get the full story as intended by James S.A. Corey. But uh, again, if you want to flesh out some of those things, some of those things you might be being like, I, I wish I knew why this. I think those short stories will really do help you out there. Now, I did finish books one and two of this series, guys, and I want to continue with book number three of Arco Scythe, that is The Toll. Uh, I think that this is the book right here that I have not seen two people have the same opinion on. Is I said I felt like everyone seems to love the first book. Second book can kind of lose some people. Some people are like, it's fine. Uh, I, I think what I said my, my deal was, I felt like it kind of shifted focus away from Citra and Rowan. I wasn't sure if I really wanted that. But it presented enough good ideas, and I really like the Grayson character. I want to know more about all of this stuff. So I'm obviously in for the conclusion of this trilogy here, but this book has had people saying they love the first two and they DNF this book halfway. So I don't know what's gonna happen. It's, it's, it's about twice the size of the first book, but again, you know, I feel like YA books like this with the big font and the double space, you can get through them pretty, pretty quick. I've read the first two books in about a combined three days, so it, it shouldn't be that big of a deal for me, but I am very anxious to see how Mr. Schuchman does wrap this up because there's a ton of unanswered questions so far. And I think I've got some ideas, but one thing I'll say about this, you know, as much as people are saying that it is a, uh, a YA book and it's got all these tropes, where I don't find anything in it predictable. And I feel like that's been a big thing with me in YA is love triangles and predictability. And I don't feel like it has any of that stuff. So uh, what is the toll about, you ask? Well, Citra and Rowan have disappeared and Endura is gone. It seems like nothing stands between the new head of the Scythum and his absolute dominion over the world. With the silence of the Thunderhead and the reverberations of the Great Resonance still shaking the earth to its core, the question remains, is there anyone left who can stop him? The answer lies in the tone, the toll, and the thunder. Guys, I don't know exactly what some of that stuff means, but I'm anxious to find out because like I said, I feel like he's done a great job setting up this world and I'm hoping he can stick to landing because like I said, man, I've heard a lot of mixed things on this book. There are those who do really enjoy it, but there's an equal amount who really say he did not stick to landing at all. And it's always a worry when you go into a trilogy like this. It's why I still, to the day, haven't read a specific trilogy that I'm not going to mention because every time I mention it, it gets people mad. If you really, 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 really want to know, uh, go down below and I'll, I'll tell you about it. But anyway, I didn't want the comments section to become just about that trilogy. So I digress, guys. Moving along here, I do got a couple of more here. Uh, I've already kind of mentioned the first one that I haven't started yet, or actually it would be the second one because the third one is going to be City of Dragons by Ms. Robin Hobb. And I've heard that this is the one where rain wilds get good <laughs> because uh, Dragon Keeper, I already talked about it on a weekly update recently, why it didn't really land for me. I think it's the poorest, weakest book one of any of these sub-series in the Realm of the Elderlings. But again, I don't feel like you get 10 books in without feeling like, okay, it's 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 fine. I, I, I trust the process. I trust where she's going with it. I just, I, I don't know. I, I feel like the first two books were very clearly one big book that has been split in half. And I say that without even having started Dragonhaven yet. But everybody's told me that you get this far, three and four are really good. And they're pretty short. 
uh, comparative to, to other Robin Hobb books in this series. I think books three and four are maybe shorter than a Life Ship Traders book, and that's encouraging. So, uh, yeah, I think I should be able to knock out both of those on this trip should I get in the on a roll there on the ship. And again, uh, Dra- City of Dragons, like I always say, guys, uh, these are sequel books, so there might be some things you don't want to know. So I, I've went through it, and I've kind of pre-read it, made sure I don't feel like it's really going to spoil anything huge for you. But if you don't want to know anything, I say maybe go ahead and skip to the next book, because I'm going to tell you now what City of Dragons is about. A small group of weak, half-formed, and unwanted dragons and their displaced human companions continue their search for a legendary sanctuary. Now, as the Misfit Band approaches its final destination, dragons and keepers alike face a challenge so insurmountable that it threatens to render their long, difficult odyssey utterly meaningless. And I will say that's something I felt about Dragon Keeper, was that that story was utterly meaningless. So can we get along with what the goal is here? I talked about when I talked about Golden Fool. I talked about when I talked about Golden Fool. You like that? I said I felt like, okay, that whole book, they talked about, this is what our goal is. And then they spent the whole book not doing it. I felt like the first book, they didn't even really tell me what the goal is. <laughs> They're just kind of like, yeah, we're going to go do this thing. Okay? So I'm hoping by book three out of the four here, I can know what that thing is besides just, hey, we're going to find this lost legendary sanctuary. I, I-, I need to know a little bit more about how we're planning to do this. How are we getting there? And you might get all this stuff in book two. I don't know, but still, book one left me with big old fat question marks above my head. And it's never what you, what you want when you're starting a new adventure. But again, I trust the process. I trust Robin Hobb thus far. So I'm hoping that she can kind of get me to a point where I am caring about these dragons and these new characters outside of just looking for cameos of people from the Live Ship Traders trilogy. Because that really feels like that's all I'm doing right now is I'm waiting for someone I know from that trilogy to show up and make me care about some of these characters. And that's one thing Miss Hobbs never really struggled with is making me care about her characters. But as you know, one out of four so far, not so much. So hopefully we can turn the tide by then. This is going to be the big one for you guys who have patiently waited for me to make this return to the world of Steven Erickson's Malazan Book of the Fallen Guys. Yes, the time has come. It's been over a year since I paused my reading of Toll the Hounds. There's how far I got before. Somebody have said, have you going to start this over? It's like 200 pages. You're going to start this over because you won't know what's going on. Guys, I didn't know what was going on while I was reading it. Okay? So I, I think I know well enough. I, I That's back when I was taking sufficient notes because I was doing those spoiler talks and stuff. So I don't think I'll be starting over, but I will be resuming with this. Now, what I want to let you guys know when I said in the beginning there, you're going to be happy, sort of, as I'm not making any promises on this. What I mean by that is, yes, I am going to read Toll the Hounds, and I am going to finish Toll the Hounds. Just not guaranteeing it's going to be in August. I will be start reading it, and with the Malazan books the rest of the way, it's going to be when I feel like it, and however long it takes is however long it takes. I'm not, I'm not limiting myself to, I'm going to read that this month. It's going to be strictly mood read the rest of the way. It might be the end of 2024 before I finish The Cripple God. I don't know, but I am resuming it, and I did say... I wanted to resume this when it felt right. It felt like the time was right. I was missing the world and I was ready to get back into it. I just don't want to get any false expectations of, oh great, we're going to hear you talking about Cripple God by Christmas. Definitely not. Definitely not. So this, yes, I am going to be working on this a little bit on the trip. That is the plan right now. And uh, we'll see how far I get into it. But uh, like I said, I've got several different things I'm going to be reading. But I am very excited to get back to this world and see the resolution of the story I put so much time into. I did need a break, and I felt like I was kind of ruining the experience for myself by forcing myself to keep going when I felt like I needed a break. And I know that's some people have found that really, really weird. Others have been like, man, it took me six years to finish Malazan. Don't stress it. you know. But a lot of people accuse me of, well, if you're just going to quit, quit. And what I said, guys, is like I've made a video recently talking about series that I would never return to. I'm not scared to say I wasn't going to return to it. I took a six-month break on Wheel of Time. It's one of my favorite fantasy series ever. So uh, the fact that it's a year, obviously that was longer than I wanted to take. But uh, again, I kept saying, people kept asking, when are you going back to it? And I say, when it feels right. And it does feel right to return to that. So uh, guys, I I love Anna Amanda Rake. And I've heard that is Anna Amanda Rake's book. So I'm very excited to finally see some more of that. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how I feel about it. Because I know there are a lot of people who I've kind of been in lockstep with my opinions of the first seven books. 
that say Toll the Hounds is their favorite in the series. So uh, hopefully that is the case. But guys, do you want to know what Toll the Hounds is about? Well, it's always fun trying to decipher and figure out what a Malazan book is about. But there is a synopsis, and it says, In Darujistan, the city of blue fire, it is said that love and death shall arrive dancing. It is summer, and the heat is oppressive. But for the small round man in the faded red waistcoat, discomfiture is not just because of the sun. All is not well. Dire portents plague his nights and haunt the city streets like fiends of shadow. An assassin skulk in alleyways, but the quarry has turned, and the hunters become the hunted. Hidden hands pluck the strings of tyranny like a fell chorus. While the band sing their tragic tales, somewhere in the distance can be heard the bang of hounds. And in that distant city of Black Coral, where rules Anamanda Rake, son of darkness, ancient crimes awaken, intent on revenge. And it seems love and death are indeed about to arrive, hand in hand, dancing. And maybe, guys, that's going to give me all my answers. Like, who is Dancer? You never know. Is that still a question I didn't have answered? I might, guys, before I leave this trip this week, I might have to listen to a few of my spoiler talks to kind of refresh myself on a few things because you guys know there's a lot of moving parts in this series, but I started to be like, well, is it Dancer or is it Dawson? I can't remember. You know, So there are things that I'm not quite sure on at the moment, but you know, I have some great resources out there and I have, uh, you know, I've got Philip on speed dial in case I need to phone a friend and ask some things because he's been one of my biggest cheerleaders for me continuing with uh, his favorite fantasy series, Malazan, Book of the Fallen, and I am excited to get back to it and finish that journey that we started back in January of 2021. How about that? It's been a while, hasn't it? So I here we go, guys. This is it. This is the moment we have been waiting for. So it is finally here, and uh, that is everything I have planned to read in August, guys, there are a couple of maybes. Uh, the Ice, that's the next book in The Bound of the Broken. I'll be finishing A War and Ruin this month. Uh, the Ice, the Arcs might be available. Ryan Cahill did message me and say he thinks that the Arcs will be available in August. If not, that'll just be whenever I get to them, I will get to them. But I am anxious to obviously continue that series. Again, I've got a 1,200-page book to hold me off before the ice comes out. So I'll be fine if it doesn't come out in August. But uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be one of my favorite fantasy series going. It already is. So uh, I'll be anxious to continue, I am sure, no doubt. Last one I have, guys, is kind of one of those, if I have time, if the mood strikes just right, I'm coming to the end of some of this busy parts of the schedule. And I realize there's a book I, I've kept putting off, and I feel just horrible about it because I never really meant to. I started reading it in December, got busy with the holidays, and then I had this crazy schedule for the first six months of the year. And then things just kind of got out of hand. And then a couple of times, I just honestly, I just kind of forgot about it. And I owe Brian Lee Durfee an apology because, guys, I do want to get back to The Lonesome Crown. Now, look, it's been since December. I was about this far. I need to maybe start back over on this one just to make sure I catch everything that's going on because I was really liking it. Again, it was just I got I got so mixed up in the holidays. Some things got out of hand and it just kind of fell off the schedule. And I forgot about it and I want to get back to it. So when I get done with all the stuff you're seeing here, uh, I, I'm going to make sure I make it a priority. I don't have very much in September planned because that'll be revving up for spooky season in October. So besides my Expanse and my Hob book, I don't really have plans in September. So either this month or September, I'll be getting back to Lonesome Crown because I love those first two books in that trilogy. And I really have no excuse for why I haven't finished that book. It's just one of those things that just... It just kind of fell by the wayside, and I'm just, I, I feel awful. I feel awful. I just kept forgetting to go back to it. Every once in a while, I get a comment Did you ever finish Lonesome Crown? I was like, No, I need to. I need to get back to it. But things have just been kind of crazy. I made some commitments to other people, and we want to make sure I got those out of the way first. But now that time is going to allow, I will get back to and continue that journey because I love where it was heading, and I have no idea how it's going to end. And people I know that have finished it have said it's, you know, one of the most satisfying trilogies they've read. And I can't wait. I, I, I feel like I, Brian knew where he was going with that story the whole time. And I'm excited to conclude it. But guys, that is everything that I have planned for August. It's going to be a great time at the beginning of August for me. Because, you know, I'll be celebrating a birthday, like I said. Sipping some booze on the beach, reading some books. That's really the best things that you can ask for in life if you're not asking Conan the Barbarian, right? But I am a very, very simple man. Put a drink in my hand and a book in the other and I'm going to be quite, quite happy. So guys, I would love to know what you have planned for August. Are you gonna be reading any of these? You got anything else 
you've got on the schedule, I'd love to hear it. Why don't you drop in the comments and let me know, guys, and I will talk to you there.